and I want you to remember some things. And we're going to talk about a subject that's very familiar to you. And a subject that some of you has really shied away from because you don't understand it. And that subject is death. Now, you need to say, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, death, where is thy sting? Death can be a lot of things, as you know. It can do a lot of things for you. Death can solve a lot of problems. Death solved the Jewish problem by alleviating Hitler. Death has solved some problems in your past by alleviating some folks in your life. Yeah, yeah. So death can be a, a strange thing. It can do many things for you, but nevertheless, death is not prejudice, it's not bias, it's not unbiased. It happens to the old, the young, the fat, the tall, the small, the black, the white, the red, the yellow, however you cut it, death is going to always come knocking at your door. So you need to understand things about death. So we're going to go into death and take a look at it because this is Resurrection Sunday and I don't think we understand why Jesus died and then rose on the third day. That by taking power over death. So then our theme today is, O oh, death, where is thy sting? Because death should not have a sting in your life anymore. You should not fear death. You should be like Jesus and embrace death. You have to remember, when anything dies, there is new life. When a tree dies, there is a seed that takes its place. So death has its advantages in some cases. So then when our loved ones die, we understand that this is inevitable. Death will come knocking at everyone's door. So we don't need to be afraid of death. We need to approach it as Jesus approached it. Sometime back, I ministered on the power of death. And I'm not sure if it's still out on the website, but because now that we understand the kingdom of God, which we talked about and preached about much of last year. You now know that Jesus died for us and rose on the third day, thereby taking power over death for us. Hence, Resurrection Sunday. That's what Resurrection Sunday is. Jesus took power over death, not for himself, because you have to understand, Jesus had control over death all along. He owned death. Why? Because he's God. Jesus died for us. He took, he took control over death for us. Why do you think his name is Jesus? When God, when he created in the beginning, he said, let what? Us go down and create man. Let us go down and do these things. So then when he named his son, he called him Jesus. So Jesus came for us. So he took control over death for us. Yes. Because he owned death in the beginning. So we now understand a little bit. That's why his name is Jesus. If, I, if you may recall, in the beginning we had power over death, but then we gave our power to death. We gave our power to death. And you say, Pastor, how is that? Well, in the beginning, we had power over death. Death was self-contained. Death had no power over us. In the beginning, God gave us dominion and authority and power over everything in the beginning. So death was included in that. So then God had to give, notice, notice, in the beginning, we had power over death, but then we gave our power to death. We turn around and gave our power to death. And that's why death plagues 
a lot of people. There's a lot of things and a lot of spirits that are associated with death, and you need to be aware of them. Knowing is half the battle. Then God had to, after we lost the power over death, because we gave our power up over death. And you say, well, Pastor, how? God, after this, after we lost our power over death, then God had to give the spirit of death to the death angel. Notice you have death, but then you have the death angel. The, the death angel is nothing but an angel of the Lord that has authority over death. Because death had to be under authority. Because God does everything decent and in order. Everything is under authority with God. Everything that has breath must praise the Lord. Everything must honor Jesus, must bow down and honor Jesus, except God. Every angel, every knee shall bow, because there's authority. There's the captain of the host. There is authority. There, is, there are legions of demons. There's powers, principalities, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness of this world. But guess what? They are under authority. They are under their own legion of authorities. So there's always authority in the realm of the heavenlies and also on earth. So then even when we gave power in the garden back to death, death still had to come under authority. So God told the angel of the Lord, go now and take authority over death. And that's how we know now that we have the deaf angel, which is an angel of the Lord that has control and power over death. So that's all that is, and you need to understand that. Because death is only a spirit, just like all the other spirits. It's a very strong spirit. It's a strong hope. It's just like any other spirit, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, Death is also a spirit. But death was self-contained. But we gave, we, we released death to do what it does to our lives and to us this day. So then God had to give the angel, the, 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 he had to give the spirit of death to the deaf angel. Because death had to be placed under authority because man could no longer control death. Go to Genesis 2. Let me help you. Genesis chapter 2. Let's go to the beginning. Genesis chapter 2. Look at verse 9. Watch this. Again, death was, like everything else, placed on the earth. In the garden, it was contained. It had no authority over man. Or woman. Adam and, Eve, Adam, Adam and Eve could have lived forever if they had chosen the correct tree, the tree of life, but instead they chose death. That's why Moses gives us the and he gives us the question: choose life or choose death. And we need to be always choosing life and the life of Christ. And so Jesus had to return to us to restore life and take control over death. That's what Resurrection Sunday is about. So you need to now understand what Resurrection Sunday is really about. Now let me tell you what happened with death and how it was released in our lives. Genesis chapter 2 verse 9 says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that was pleasant to the sight and for good for food, the tree of life. The tree of life is Jesus, because it's life. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the light, I am the life of everlasting. So he says, and God, he says, notice, and out of the ground God made the, the Lord God to grow everything, every tree that was pleasant in his sight, and good for food, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So the tree of knowledge and good and evil contains a whole lot of things. Every individual that is born knows about what's good and evil. 
The spirit of good and evil is in every individual. When they're born, they know good and evil. They have to be taught to a place, but they know what's good and evil. You can tell a baby, no, honey, and they'll stop because the spirit of good and evil will tell them, no, that's not right. I shouldn't offend anybody. A child knows this. How do you think they can stop when you tell them? That was not taught, but it's a, the spirit of good that's in them that says, I want to do right by my parents. I want them to do right by my fellow man. I want to do right because the Holy Spirit is telling me to do right. But the evil, we know the evil one. The devil doesn't have control over death. Death is its own entity in itself. It was self-contained. The enemy just made, made, made Adam and Eve sin. He beguiled them. That was the devil, the old snake, the serpent. But death was self-contained. Death was by itself, living a life, not bothering and not wanting to bother anybody. But we released it on our lives. Look what it says. He says, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Look at verse 17. Now jump to 17. But the tree of knowledge, the tree of knowledge is good and evil. The tree of knowledge possess good and evil. Thou shalt not eat of it. Notice he gave you a command. That's just like when a parent gives a child a, a command. I don't need you to go down the street over to Johnny's house today because there's some stuff going on down there. Notice, that's just like God telling them, listen, I, all, all the way, all, although the, the, this stuff is over here, you're not ready yet. A child cannot take on, he, that's why a child cannot get, a child cannot cook on the stove. Because it's not ready, it has not been trained, it has not been prepared to understand the heat element and what it does to how to cook on a stove. And when they do try to cook on a stove, they get what? Burnt. Adam and Eve was not ready yet to be taught about this tree of knowledge and nor the tree of life. They were still yet innocent. They were children. And God was coming down every day to teach them in the cool of the day. But they got ahead of themselves. How I many know some folks like that? And then they get in trouble. So here, he tells them, look at verse 17, Genesis chapter 2. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil thy shall not eat of. For in that day that thy eateth thereof thyself, thy shall surely die. There it is. Death is in that tree. He says if you touch it, you if you touch it and you eat it, you will surely die. There will no be no be no ends, no buts, no ifs, no whys, because whatever. If you eat of it, you will surely die. That's where it was. That was death. And death is in that tree. Living his own life, he was self-contained, wasn't bothering nobody. And God said, don't do it. Don't go release death. But no, that's not what Adam and Eve wanted to do. In terms, because you know how, and, and, and you really can't blame the old snake, the old beguiling serpent, because they had an eye for that tree. They had it in their minds that they were going to go do it at some point. They just couldn't figure out how. You know how sometimes we'll be set and ready. Sometimes we can be a home. We can be home kind of. We don't let ourselves get in a boarded state. And then that old individual will call us. Uh-oh. We already know it don't take much for us to get, be prepped and, and to go out and do evil. And that old phone call say, hey, honey, I, let's go back. Oh, let's go. Oh, we can make it back before anybody get home. And that's what the old serpent was saying to Adam and Eve. Listen, go ahead and eat of this tree. No problem. Don't matter about what God told you not to do. 
Just do it. And there, they did it. And they released death. And now the spirit of death is released. It's going to do what it does. It's going to kill. And it's not going to take prisoners. It can kill millions at one time, or it can kill one or two. It can kill babies. It can kill old people, young people. That's why death can come at any time. No one knows the hour of death. But here, but this is how it got free. It was in the garden like every other tree. It was inside this tree of good and evil. That's where he was. Look at Genesis chapter 3. It gets better. Look at Genesis chapter 3. We now know how death got free. Death had no power. We had power over death. We had power over death. Adam did. Look at Genesis chapter 3. Look at verse 3. But of the fruit, here he is again, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, he says, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall she, you touch it, you, or at least you die. He said, don't eat of it, don't touch it, don't look upon it, or you will surely die. It's death. That's where death came from. In other words, dear ones, we know things we should not do. If you do, you will surely die. It's almost like going out there and someone telling you, don't go uh, walking in the street when the light's green and cars are coming down the street about 90 miles an hour. Don't do that or you will surely die. This is what God told him. He says, Genesis chapter 3, verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now look at 17, same chapter. And unto Adam, notice Adam, the man, it was all his fault because it was on his watch. He could have put a halt to all of it because he was in charge. But instead, he listened to others. He listened to his wife. But he could have said, wait a minute. Hang on, honey. Let me talk to God about this. Let me see what God says. Sure, we've been tempted a little bit, but hold up. Wait a minute. Let's seek counsel. But no. No hesitation. That's what we do. We don't think. We just do. And we get ourselves in trouble. When we could have at least talked about it. We could have at least prayed about it. But they didn't either. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, he says, Unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and thou hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow. Sorrow. Let me tell you about sorrow. Notice that says death has so many attachment of spirits. Death does. He says, if you do this, and because you have done this, you have released the spirit of sorrow. What happens when someone dies that you love? There is what? Sorrow. And in sorrow, sorrow comes from the spirit of death. And also, it which brings about grief. And you understand why these spirits attack you or come upon you when someone close to you dies because it's the spirit of death that owns these spirits. Grief, mourning, sadness, unhappiness shall die. Eat of all these things, the days, all the days of thy life. This is what the spirit of death brings. And this is why when someone dies as close to you, 
and you grieve. And someone who loves you tells you, you cannot continue to grieve. You must say your farewells and make peace. Because if you continue to grieve, then the enemy, the devil, can come in and bring these other spirits of sadness and oppression and grief. And he'll lay them on you. And if you don't shake yourself because you are in the land of the living, and that's why Jesus says, I am the way and the light because you are supposed to seek the light. Then you let that go so you can live in him. So he says, look at 18. So now we know, we understand that the spirit of death runs in everyone's life. And these are the spirits that it has. So now when someone dies, you say, wait a minute. That's the spirit of death. And the angel of the Lord has authority over the spirit of death. Death cannot come to your door unless he's released. And unto Adam, he said, notice, but look at 18. Thorns also and thistles shall, shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat herbs. Thou shalt eat herbs. Herbs are related to death. It's related to the spirit of death. These things, the spirit of death has so many things, and you have to be careful. Herbs are related to the spirit of death. And you say, well, Pastor, how so? He says, notice 18, he's telling God, he's telling him all the stuff is going to come up on you now. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. That's why herbs are bitter. Because herbs are associated with the spirit of death. Go to Exodus 12. Exodus 12. Verse 8, just, just Exodus 12, verse 8, and watch this. You all remember Pharaoh, and you all remember when God released in this book, in this chapter, God released the angel of death, the death angel, and he destroyed every firstborn in Egyptian and the Pharaoh's house. So the death angel was released. But notice he told Israel, he says, I'm not going to kill your house. I'm not going to kill your firstborn, but you're going to understand that I'm doing this and I have released the spirit of death. You're going to remember this day. And how are you going to remember how sad this day is? Look at, look at Exodus, Exodus chapter 12, verse 8. And he says, they shall eat the flesh in the night, roasted with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall they eat. To remember this night when the death angel came and killed everyone in Pharaoh's house, every firstborn, and the whole land of Egypt. It was a very sad night, much screaming. And Israel was told to stay in the house and do these things so that they would understand about the spirit of death had been released. This is a good chapter to read as Exodus 12. So then Genesis 19, Genesis chapter 3, verse 19 again, and the sweat of thy face shall thy eat bread till thy return unto the ground. From out of it thy came and I was taken unto dust I shall go and return and that was the end of it but death was released therefore dear ones God has had to place death under authority God placed death under the angel of the Lord because man Adam could not control death anymore they released death the devil beguiled them, and so they released 
death on them. So now death is released. They don't have any more control. So God released an angel, and that angel was called the death angel because he had authority over the spirit of death. And so God put that angel over death until Jesus came. Oh, somebody. Oh, somebody. Get ready, get ready, get ready. See, because we're going to get our power back. We're going to get our power back. But see, you had to understand where he came from. We always had power over him. We just gave it to the devil. The devil don't even have power over death. It's the angel of the Lord. See, we be talking about, oh, the devil. No, no, the devil can't kill you. God releases the death angel. The devil have to get permission, just like us, to do anything. So don't let him fool you. So he says, so now we understand. We understand. Now go, now go, now go to 1 Corinthians 15. And let's, 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 let's get this thing. Because, see, we're going we gonna to tell death. We're going to say, oh, death, where is thy sting? Where is thy sting? Because you don't have no more sting. And you don't have no more authority over me. Come on, somebody. Amen. See, you should be always be ye ready. Whatever the situation is, wherever it comes, you should be ye. Whoa, where is thy sting? Hey, God. Amen. Oh, somebody. Hey. Walk out for all oh, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Resurrection Sunday is here. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why he came and he said, let me go, God, and let me return. Yes. And let me take authority over the death. Let me take authority over death and give him the keys back. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. See, that's why you don't not concerned about the world and all everybody's. You're not concerned about that. Why? Yes, You're all dead. Where is thy sting? Oh, somebody. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Amen. <clears throat> Let's look at the, the resurrection of Christ. Watch this. Watch this. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you. The gospel, the reason it's the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it is the gospel, the word that he preached. See, whatever he preached became gospel. Because gospel represents truth. So that's why it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, when we preach the gospel, it's the truth. Because it's the word that he preached. Oh, somebody. He pre that's the message that he preached. So now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received on which you have taken your stand. See, you can take a stand now. And stand on the word of God. Amen. See? Because you know some things. Amen. How you have some power now. Yeah. Hey, by the gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. Mm -hmm. See, you gotta begin to walk in this thing now. See, we've been talking about the kingdom of heaven and all. You got to walk in the in authority. Yeah. See, because that's what Jesus came. That's, that's what it was about. See, we can understand that now. He says, look at verse 3. For what I received, I passed to you as the first importance. That Christ died for our sins. According to what? The scriptures. Hallelujah. That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day. According to the scriptures. And that he appeared to many. Hallelujah. Oh, man, he, 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 he appeared to Cephas and went down the street and appeared to some more. Then he appeared to some, some hundreds of folk before he left here. Yeah. And he went up and sat down. And, and this is after the man that bought him got up. Hallelujah. Oh, Walked around and had uh, fish and bread. Fish is an old man. And just preached. I said, boy, I got to go now. Yes, yes. I got to prepare a place for you. Amen. See, I, I planted a seed now. You understand? Here's the keys, by the way. Take authority now over death and everything else that's in your life. That's why I went down there. That's all the reason I went down there. So I could come back and give you power. He says, the resurrection of death. Look at verse 12. But if it is preached that Christ has been 
risen from the dead. How can someone, how can someone of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been risen. But if Christ has been risen, our preaching, if he's not been risen, our preaching then is useless and your faith is in vain. Oh, somebody. See, you've got something to stand on. See, you know your faith. You know Christ. Because why? He preached this message. And they're saying, if you can't believe that he rose on the third day, oh, somebody, then everything else is null and void. Because you can't get no power until he came back and give you the keys of the kingdom. Yes, yes. The kingdom of heaven. See, that's when we got our power. Oh, somebody. It, it's like he trained us. Oh, it's like I was telling you. If, if someone's, if we'll go back to the child and, and, and the stove. If someone's going to be a chef, they got to be trained. Uh, and, and, and as they're beginning their training, guess what? They don't, they, they, oh, somebody, watch this, watch this. They don't get the keys to their own restaurant until they become trained and they become a chef. Oh, somebody. Until they what? Become certified. Jesus said he trained them, and he says, okay, now I can give you. Come on, somebody. I can, oh, somebody. I can give you your house. I can give you the kingdom now. Yes, yes, yes. Because you understand some things. Oh, man. Oh, somebody. But he says, he says I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not quite done with you yet. He says, dear brothers and sisters, look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. Verse 20, same chapter, verse 15, first Chronicles 15. But he says, he says, verse 20, dear brothers and sisters, but Christ has indeed been risen from the dead. Oh, somebody, wave your hand if you believe it with all your heart. Yes, yes. But Christ has been risen from the dead indeed. The first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since death, death came through a man. Mm. Wow. Since death came through a man, the resurrection of death comes also through a man. See, Adam was that man. That's where death came through because he, he, he let him go. He had him, but he let him go. And when he let him go, he went. He said, oh, somebody, I'm going to go rap and I'm going to kill as many as I can. That's all I know how to do. There he is running rapid. So much so, God said, wait a minute, boy. I got to put some authority on you because you just wipe out it. Angel of the Lord, come under my authority. Come under my authority. And when God tell me, then I release you. So he did. Hold up. He couldn't even just go like he wanted to. So here he is, he says. But has Christ indeed have been risen from the dead? The first fruit of those who have fallen asleep, for since death came from a man and through a man, the resurrection of death and dead comes through a man. For and as in Adam all died, we all was death, doomed. But so in Christ we all now are alive. We're alive through Christ. We're alive through Christ. Now here's the good news. Here's the good news. When it comes, when it comes, those who belong to him, when he comes, those who belong to him, he will take. When he comes, those that belong to him, and this is what the scripture says, he will take. Then the end will come. The end will come, not until the entire gospel has been preached throughout the world. And then he will claim those that belong to him, then the end will come. And when he hands over, when, when he hands over the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, watch this, when he hands over the kingdom of God to the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, all authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all enemies, all his enemies, under his feet, the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death. Death is the last one, he says. But he took authority over it. He put him under subjection. And now he says when he returns, he's simply just going to destroy him because he's not needed anymore. Oh, man. 
See, that's why. But now you have authority over death and everything else in your life. You don't need to be worrying about this or that. That's why he said, why are you worried? Be anxious or nothing. Don't worry. He says, the sparrows, I feed them. I take care of you. Now, God has kept you up until that's everything that has happened. And you've had some horrific things to happen. But guess what? God was right there to bail you out of them. So therefore, he's not going to leave you. And now he's saying, listen, I'm, I, I'm a, when I get, I'm going to destroy everything. Everything that ever bothered you. All them old enemies, all somebody. Get ready. They've been to be destroyed. I would advise I'm going to leave you alone. So here he says, oh, oh somebody. He says, because he fixed get ready to destroy them all. So finally, dear ones, death had been swallowed up in victory. When Jesus came up on that third day, he had them keys just slanging them. You know, just slanging them. Ah, oh, that one boy, you want some keys? Get out. Oh, here we go. I, 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 everything I own, the kingdom of heaven. And when I go to heaven and sit at my father, and he released me to come back, I'm taking everything with me. Everything that belongs to me, I'm taking it back. And that means you and all your mansions, your houses, and all that stuff. He says, you can have all that stuff too. But I'm taking it because it's all mine. Because I've taken authority and moved everything out of your life. Oh, somebody. Death has been swallowed up in victory. That's why we can say, Oh, death, you have no victory. Where, oh, death, is your victory? He has none. See that old death that was released? He's now under subjection. It's just like we were back in the garden, if you want to think about it that way. He's locked back up in your life. Only if you know Jesus. Only if you claim him to be your Lord and Savior. Because he took authority over death. He gave you the key. Oh, somebody. I need to help somebody. If you've got no relationship, if you are not in the family, and then when the heir or when the relative dies, you being the heir, you can't get none of the wealth if you're not in the family. So if, you, if, if, if you're in the family of Jesus and then he died and, and he says, I'm going to give you a new testament and then I'm going to give you a new inheritance and I'm going to give you this and, and I'm going to give you that, but at first I must go. So then when the wheel, oh, somebody, when the wheel and testament is read, guess what? You being the heir, guess what? You're going to get everything that he promised you because you're in the family. Now, that ought to help somebody. Because, see, Jesus, gonna, he says, I'm coming back for mine. Because you are in his family. So those that don't know Jesus and those that are not in the family, guess what? They're not going to get the inheritance. They're not going to get blessed. And guess what? Old death. He's going to have reign over them. Old death is going to start whooping them. And you see it every day. Every day. Now, I, I, you know what? I, I can't say nothing about this one or that one, but every day somebody get blown up. Old death is having a field day. And it could be some good ones in there. And it could be some bad ones in there. But somebody, death is saying, I got to get somebody. Now, I know them that was in the, the first one that I remember over there. They was all at a rock band. Having a good time, and old death showed up and blew up a whole lot of folks. There would be weeping and gnashing and gashing of teeth. See, if you don't know Jesus, oh death, he has victory over you. But when you know Jesus, you're not fearing no death. You're not fearing no death. Some of us as Christians, you know. We'd be saying, Dev, come on. <laughs> 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 
you know, come on, I'm ready, get me out of here. God said, no, I'm not done with you yet. And you have no authority to tell death that. Because God is the one who releases the death angel. Amen? So he says, death has been swallowed up in victory, in the Lord's victory, in Jesus' victory, which is our victory because we have been engrafted in. We are adopted. We are his, we are his inheritance. Where, O oh death, is your victory then? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. There it is. The sting of death is sin. Anybody ever been stung by a bee? Oh, man, it stings. Boy, you'd be like, good, man. Don't be allergic. But you something you remember. And I guarantee you, that's some, you don't want to go that way no more. So then the sting is gone from death. Those that know Jesus. He says, the sting of death is sin then. And the power of sin is the law. And that's what you're seeing in the world today. You're seeing death sting folks that are in sin. But death has no power over you. Because you belong, you belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. Therefore then, but thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm then. Let nothing move you anymore. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. See, when you're doing the work of the Lord, you need not worry about no death or anything else. I'm telling you because God's going to take care of you. God's going to take care of you. I'm looking at some of you and I know God's taking care of you. Every day, he's taking care of your needs. When you think you want it, all of a sudden it shows up. And everything turns out all right. Sometimes better than all right. Just when you thought it was going to arrive. God flipped it. Oh, somebody. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm then. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because... You know that your labor in God, Sister T, hallelujah, because that's some good labor you did this morning. <laughs> in God, your work in God, Brother Max, amen. He says, in God, it's not in vain, dear ones. It's not in vain. God is going to take whatever you're doing and he's going to use it. If you give it to God, he will turn it around and multiply it. He will take whatever it is. He'll take that C, that C plus that you've been working with and turn it into an A. Just give it to God. Oh, death, where is thy sting? It's no more. We've taken it back. Hallelujah. So just forgive Adam, amen, <laughs> and thank Jesus, because we have power now. Jesus gave it all back to us. Oh, somebody, let's give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Father God, we thank you today for this Resurrection Sunday. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for him coming and taking back the power over death and taking authority over death and giving us power over death. That we need not fear, Father. Hallelujah. We need not fear anything but walk in the fear of the Lord. For we know now that the enemy has no power over us. For he is bound and cursed and cast down to the bottomless pit of hell. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.